cocaine and methamphetamine, as well as attempting to import cocaine. The workers are among 11 people now facing charges. They're accused of smuggling cocaine through Pearson Airport. Plus... For sure, we noticed there's a lot more water than usual. It's the incredible shrinking beach, and it's bad news for Wasega businesses. And it's the next big tourist attraction coming to the heart of downtown. Take a tour of Canada from the base of the CN Tower. Good evening, I'm Mike Wise. Police arrested two airline employees as part of a multi-million dollar drug trafficking investigation. They're among 11 people charged in a case connected to alleged fentanyl and cocaine trafficking. Renda Redekop has the details. The RCMP say this is the result of four days of raids, $400,000 in cash, drugs including fentanyl, heroin and methamphetamines. Police also seized three vehicles. They say they also uncovered a drug trafficking ring working out of Pearson International Airport. Two Sunwing Airlines employees are charged. They were long-term Sunwing employees and uh, that's all I can really say. Their names? 40-year-old Andrej Krawczyk of Kitchener and 46-year-old Gianni Balistrin of Mississauga. They're accused of attempting to import cocaine, cocaine trafficking and conspiracy to import cocaine. According to a source with knowledge of the investigation, both worked in airplane maintenance. Police say the cocaine was coming from sunny getaway spots, Jamaica, Aruba, Costa Rica and the Dominican Republic, all Sunwing destinations. And the cocaine is, is primarily produced in South America, uh, but the transshipment points uh, when they're trafficking it globally uh, will often stop in the Caribbean countries and that's where uh, our investigation took us. The RCMP thanked Sunwing Airlines for its help with this investigation. In a statement, the company says the two employees have been suspended without pay, pending the completion of the legal proceedings. The company also says their security clearance was immediately revoked, along with access to company offices. Police say a separate part of the raid targeted traffickers of other drugs. Officers worked undercover, infiltrating groups that supply drugs to the GTA and southwestern Ontario. The biggest seizure was a fentanyl, 10 kilograms worth. This is uh, millions of doses. This is a significant impact to southwestern Ontario, uh, the fentanyl trafficking. The 11 people charged in this case range in age from 20 to 46. Lorenda Redekop, CBC News, Toronto. A man is dead and four people are injured after a crash on Highway 407 in Whitby tonight. OPP Sergeant Kerry Schmidt says police closed all westbound lanes of the highway at Lake Ridge Road for the investigation. Schmidt says one vehicle traveling eastbound crossed over the median and ended up on the westbound side where it struck another vehicle. The passenger in the vehicle that crossed over the center line, a man in his 20s, he died at the scene. Some eastbound lanes are also closed for the investigation. Highway 412 northbound is also closed at the 407. And this was the scene late this afternoon at a scrapyard in Brampton along Intermodal Drive just north of Highway 407. Police say the fire broke out around 6. Now at some point the flames are over 12 meters high. But there were no injuries and the fire is now out. And the stretch of Intermodal Drive is closed while crews clean up. And a man is in stable condition tonight after a stabbing last night just as the first evening of the Beaches Jazz Festival was wrapping up. Our camera was there as the victim arrived at hospital. Someone stabbed the 27-year-old in the abdomen shortly after the performances wrapped up at 11 p.m. near Queen and Woodbine. The man managed to alert some nearby firefighters who provided first aid. So far, police have made no arrests. We know the saying, there are two seasons in Toronto, winter and construction. Well, now that that second season is in full swing, drivers are feeling the pain of construction on the roads. Couple that with summer events causing even more restrictions and you've got a bit of a perfect storm. Angelina King takes us through it. I was elected on a mandate to get this city moving. And while that won't happen overnight, uh, we are going to begin the process today of taking very definite steps uh, to do just that. That was Mayor John Tory speaking in 2014, telling drivers their commute will get easier. So has it? Do you think traffic's been better or worse in the last five years? Oh, it's definitely been worse, much worse. There's construction everywhere. Worse than worse. Yeah, we are losing business, to be honest. We can't make money because we can't drive. And it's insane. It's brutal. 
what do you think about the mayor's kind of promises uh, on battling congestion? Where do you think we're at with some of those? Well, uh, I mean, I think the, uh, the zero tolerance of parking on main arterial roads during rush hour, I think that's working. I think the towing is a, is a good deterrence. There's heavy fines. Uh, at the same time, we're just treading water. As we continue to grow, it's harder and harder to keep the traffic flowing. And as I mentioned, the transit system, 30 years behind. In May, the mayor said this is the busiest construction season ever in Toronto. The city says there are more than 100 permits currently allowing lane closures for construction. In a year, it issues around 500 road closure permits for special events. This weekend alone, events are closing Ossington between Queen and Dundas, Queen Street East between Woodbine and Beach, Dundas Square from Young Street to O'Keefe Lane, a curb lane on Victoria between Dundas Square and Shooter, plus a small portion of Adelaide. It will be fully closed between Young and Baste until 6 a.m. Monday to accommodate filming the Netflix series Jupiter's Legacy. That's on top of the more than 180 major road restrictions in the city, plus there are more than 180 moderate restrictions and more than 350 minor ones. If there are ways that we can limit those closures, we definitely do that. We look at that. Like I said, we have a de dedicated group that looks at uh, these road closure applications. Sometimes it's not possible, but we do make sure that there's alternate routes for people to take. Some people say this is what makes Toronto vibrant. There's lots going on, and yes, there's construction, but try to embrace it because that means that the city is growing and making improvements. Angelina King, CBC News, Toronto. Colette is here with her first look at the weekend forecast. It's going to be a hot one. <laughs> yeah, that, that sums it up right there, Mike. Now, we can look back at last weekend, and if you remember how that felt, well, all right, we had some of those Humidex values in the 40s. It's not going to be that hot, yet still it's enough that Environment Canada does have some heat warnings issued for us for the weekend and extending into Monday, actually. But overnight tonight, you can just relax, sit back, enjoy, clear skies. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, we see that pattern repeating, especially into cottage country in the afternoon hours and then kind of extending into the early evening down towards the GTA of seeing a few thunderstorms popping up. Pretty isolated on Saturday, but it's still something to know about. And then we'll see something more widespread Saturday night kind of into Sunday. Let me sh show you what I mean by that. So nice tonight. We're doing okay. Tomorrow morning, a lot of sunshine too. Then you start to see these starting to pop up. A few spots with some heavier downpours. Pretty isolated again. But then Saturday night becomes a little more widespread into Sunday. We'll see some scattered showers throughout. A few thunderstorms embedded. And then it kind of clears out later in the day on Sunday as we get into the evening hours. But throughout the day, that's something you have to keep in mind. So we're doing a little bit better probably Saturday than Sunday in terms of wet conditions but overnight tonight 20 degrees there you go tomorrow afternoon 31 feeling like 36 the humidex values go up from there Mike I'll fill you in coming up okay thanks go you're welcome there's a great view of Toronto from on top of the CN Tower but in a couple of years a new tourist attraction at the base of the tower will give you a great view of the rest of the country and tourism officials think it's going to offer something many visitors don't see when they visit our city. Daniel Clark has that story. Imagine you're on a flight from coast to coast, taking in all the best sights the country can offer, projected on a curved screen in front of you as you're suspended in a seat, feet dangling, strapped in. Fly Over Toronto will utilize state-of-the-art ride and audiovisual technology. You'll even feel like you're there. So we have wind, mist and sense combined with motion. So if you're diving down into a river, you're going to get a spray of mist in your face, the wind in your hair, and you really feel like you're in the pilot seat. Flyover Attractions runs a theatre like this in Vancouver. For its new Toronto location, at the base of the CN Tower, it's filming a brand new movie that will take 14 months to make. Ready in time for the attraction's debut in 2022, Tourism Toronto thinks it'll be a great fit. As a destination, we've got lots of great attractions, but it's always important to have new things for people to come back and experience. He thinks it might appeal to a visitor in the big city who still wants a sense of the rest of the country. One of the things that's exciting about this new attraction, Flyover, is that it really embraces Canada. And so many overseas visitors, when they travel to Toronto, they're choosing to come to Canada first. And then Toronto's the biggest city, so they'll often come here, but they really want a Canadian experience. 
I showed passerby some flyover footage and asked if they'd go. Uh, look, and you can look Canada. You can see the whole country? Yes. It can be uh, useful because uh, we will see only Toronto, Ottawa and uh, Montreal and it can be uh, great to see other uh, part of the country. Yeah, I, well, to see the whole city, see all over the place, that would be great. It's like going up the CN Tower, you can see everywhere. Make life easier for a mother of three? Yes. As for what it'll set a family back, we don't know the Toronto prices yet. But in Vancouver, an eight-minute ride will cost around $30 each, more during peak hours. Daniel Clark, CBC News, Toronto. And Flyover Canada isn't the first motion-based ride to set up at the base of the CN Tower. You may recall in the mid-80s, the basement hosted Tour of the Universe. This is the world's first aircraft simulator ride, where visitors were rushed far into the future to the year 2019 so they could take a simulated space shuttle flight to Jupiter. Tour of the Universe ran at the base of the CN Tower until 1992. There's not much enough space for everyone to be sitting around here. Like, I feel like the water is very high up and it's much closer this year. It's the incredible shrinking beach. We head to a Sega where rising water levels aren't just limiting spots to tan. They're also hitting the town's bottom line. That's after the break. This weekend's hot temperatures will no doubt mean Wasega Beach will be a popular place, but high water levels this summer means there's actually less beachfront for sun seekers. And as Philip Lee Shannock tells us, many businesses in the resort town are worried that could erode their bottom line. For these beachgoers, it's tight quarters, as many had to plan ahead to claim a patch of sand. We got here early. We got a little space. We're fine. Like, it's nice. But yeah, for sure, we noticed there's a lot more water than usual. Usually, there's much more space to stretch out. This year, there's much less sandy real estate to go around, and many were surprised that the beach strip is so narrow. There's not enough space for everyone to be sitting around here. Like, I feel like the water is very high up and it's much closer this year. From above, it's pretty dramatic. Long stretches of the popular sandy beach have narrowed as high water levels have cut the busiest areas roughly in half. In other areas, it's just a tiny strip or completely submerged. Local businesses are hoping tourists will still come for the surf and sand. You have to really like your neighbour because as you can see uh, when you're down here enjoying the beach, uh, you're close to your neighbour, which isn't a bad thing. Still, so far on most days, the parking lots near the main beach are full. Still, businesses that rent out accommodations are worried. It's the overnighters that uh, aren't necessarily staying in the accommodation in Wasaga Beach. There are parts of this beach that are completely washed away. People who have been coming here for decades say they haven't seen the water this high for quite some time. Way, way back in about 15 years ago. 
Spiro Mavro and his family have been coming here for 30 years. He says in the late 80s, the water was even higher. The water was coming up and it was actually hitting our building. It was right up, you couldn't even walk the beach. He says after that year, many considered building retaining walls to protect their properties, but then water levels dropped dramatically in the years that followed. Still, the town and parks officials are keeping an eye on how much shoreline is lost due to wave damage and erosion. Phil Blishenok, CBC News, Wasaga Beach. You can do anything you want to him. I hired you to be an actor, Rick, not a TV cowboy. You're better than that. Pitt, DiCaprio, Tarantino, still ahead. Eli Glasner gives us his take on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The weather update is brought to you by Train Extreme Conditions Testing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. The opening ceremonies for the Pan Am Games taking place tonight in Lima, Peru. Field hockey player Scott Tupper, the flag bearer for Team Canada. We have 478 athletes representing the country this year, looking to top the 219 medals we won when Toronto hosted the last Pan Am Games in 2015. Well, the Jays hosting Tampa Bay at the Dome tonight. Weird play in the bottom of the fourth. Two on for Freddie Galvis. His shot lands just inside the line in left. Tony Pham chasing it, but watch this. He botches the pickup. The ball ends up in the crowd. Two runners come in to score, but after a review, the runners were awarded just two bases, so the play just ties the game. Next inning, the Rays load the bases for Travis Darno. He His shot gets past Galvis and scores two. Toronto manages just four base hits as they lose the first game of the series 3-1. to one. And Sidney Pickram swimming onto the podium and into the Canadian record books today at the World Championships in South Korea. She won bronze in the 200-meter breaststroke behind swimmers from Russia and South Africa. That was Canada's sixth swimming medal in the pool, matching a record set back in 1978. Canada could set a new record since swimming competition continues this weekend. Well, for the next two weeks, anyone who follows cricket will have their eyes on what's happening in Brampton. Some of the game's biggest stars are there in the Global T20 Canada tournament. Our Greg Ross spoke to organizers today about what makes Brampton the perfect city to host this event. 
I, I think the demographics speak to the, to the game. So people in Brampton tend to be immigrants who've uh, migrated to Canada in the last 15 to 20 years. Some of the kids were born and raised here, but they're interacting with the game of cricket outside of Canada. So there's a natural market. How do you go about teaching people who don't know the game? How do you how do you go after that market? That's a really good, really good question because I think for us, one of the things is we have to bring cricket to the mainstream. And uh, by doing that, we have to get into people's households and uh, give uh, master classes, lessons, talk about the history of the game, the impact on the game culturally uh, outside of North America. Outside of North America, cricket is the number two uh, largest sport in the world. There are 102 players competing in the GT20, 31 of them are Canadian, and organizers hope they can help inspire the next generation of Canadian cricket players. The tournament runs until August 11th. Colette is back with her extended forecast and always looking, for a nice, looking forward to a nice summer weekend and oh boy is it going to be feeling like summer. It, it is feeling like summer. Here we go again with the heat really kind of pounding us into the weekend. It won't be quite as humid as last weekend, but still it's enough when we start to see our temperatures in the low 30s and overnight lows in the low 20s. Yeah, we get into a situation where we've got heat warnings and this is for the weekend and extending into Monday. In fact, so all around the GTA, you see that into extreme eastern Ontario around the nation's capital back towards southwestern Ontario for our viewers in the Windsor area also into this heat warning. Now, the Almanac, if we have a look at it, we were pretty close, and actually a little on the warm side even today. 27.1 is an average high, 15.2 an average low. We're going to be trending a good 5 degrees kind of above that, or just about 5 degrees above that, with both the daytime highs and the overnight lows as we head into Saturday. But through the night tonight, because we have some nice conditions and we're looking at clear skies, it means we start off Saturday with a lot of sunshine. And that continues until as we get into the afternoon, you'll start to see some isolated storms popping up into cottage country. This is at 3 p.m. that I've just paused this. As I let it roll forward, you see it becomes a bit more widespread. And Saturday evening, the risk into the GTA and through the overnight, that chance of seeing some active weather. Then Sunday morning, still some cloud cover, maybe some quieter conditions, and then it starts to fill in again into the afternoon. And so Sunday really looks like more, we'll see some waves of some showers kind of coming through at times, not the whole day or anything, but more so than we're gonna see on Saturday, we're gonna have that risk into Sunday, then we get into a bit of a clearing, and then we'll repeat the pattern again as we go into the beginning of next week. For southwestern Ontario, this is what you're looking at overnight tonight. Very mild temperatures for those overnight lows and certainly into the heat again with low 30s into tomorrow afternoon and a few isolated showers, heavier downpours and some of those thunderstorms and some lightning strikes uh, to be thinking about. But again, pretty highly isolated overnight tonight for the GTA, kind of a range of temperatures, but all hovering near that 20 degrees. And then tomorrow afternoon, here we go again. So temperature a little bit hotter than today, but the humidity coming up, it'll be even worse into Sunday, in fact. And then this is how it looks for your five day forecast. So even Monday, we're still talking about the temperature around 30 degrees, getting into the upper 30s, not into the 40s like last weekend with the Humidex, but still Sunday and Monday. And then it starts to break as the cold front comes through Tuesday and then relief for those of you who don't like the humidity, Mike, that comes, starts Tuesday, you'll really feel it Wednesday. All right, thanks a lot, Colette. No problem.
Quentin Tarantino's newest film features two men working in Hollywood surrounded by superstars, sex, and the glamour of the 60s. Throw in a little Tarantino violence, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio sure sounds like a hit, but is it? CBC Entertainment reporter Eli Glasner finds out. The year is 1969 and Leonardo DiCaprio is Rick Dalton. He used to be on the top of the Hollywood food chain, star of his own cowboy show. Now he's getting walk-on parts. But right by his side is wingman, body double and stuntman extraordinaire Cliff Booth. Actors are required to do a, a lot of dangerous stuff. <laughs> Cliff here is meant to help carry the load. While Cliff's content to do Rick's bidding, Rick feels the spotlight sliding away, and he doesn't like it. All right, what's the matter, partner? It's official, old buddy. And it has been. And here's where fact and fiction mix like the margaritas Cliff can't get enough of. That's Margot Robbie playing the real-life actor Sharon Tate, who happens to be married to the director, Roman Polanski, who happens to be Rick's next-door neighbor. And here the paths diverge. We see Rick trying to get his career on track, while Cliff crosses paths with some beguiling hippies who follow a certain musician named Charles Manson. But let's stop for a moment and zero in on Leonardo DiCaprio. On the surface, he's playing the classic square-jawed Hollywood heartthrob. But when the camera's off, we see another side, a stuttering, selfish sad sack drowning in drink and self-pity. Anybody accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. It's called manslaughter. Then there's Brad Pitt channeling Robert Redford. Cliff's effortless charisma fits him as perfectly as that Hawaiian shirt. But there's another side. Word around town is he murdered his wife and got away with it. But hey, she was annoying. So who are we to judge, right? And if that doesn't make him enough of a threat, there's this absurd showdown with martial arts master Bruce Lee. For film number nine, Tarantino was bearing his soul. It's a love letter to La La Land, but it's a narrow slice. Instead of the snap, crackle, pop dialogue of his best stuff, we have a rambling runtime of two hours and 45 minutes. Here, Charles Manson and his barefoot army could have been something more. There are moments of true suspense when Cliff starts to investigate, but in the end, they're just props. A grisly way to show what Tarantino's Hollywood heroes are really capable of. It might be his Hollywood fantasy. It's not mine. Three stars out of five. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, well, before we go, have you ever had a moment where, try as you might, you can't remember the name of a person you should be able to? Well, it happens to me all the time. Tomorrow on Fresh Air, we'll have an interview with a dental surgeon who's actually spent the past 11 years researching cognitive decline and now has some ideas about what can be done to improve our abilities at any age. You can hear that interview tomorrow morning on Fresh Air just after the 8.30 news on CBC Radio 1. Have a great weekend. Try to remember to listen. Thank you.